Hey now, everyone, it's time to break down Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 8, a.k.a. Bad Territory. But before we get to it, spoilers. Spoilers. All right, first things first, let's get down to the review of Bad Territory, which was another solid entry of the Bad Batch in its third and final season. I just really appreciate this episode's use of characters from seasons past, as well as building on the crosshair and Omega dynamic that has kind of been the one of the core narratives of this season. But I have to say, I, I really feel like Fennec Shand, in general, was the star of this episode. And that obviously was bolstered by Ming-Na Wen's vocal performance, which was just expertly done. But I thought Fennec just, she stole this episode. I mean, she is the standout character. She's in the standout moments from this episode. I loved how she more or less dominated Hunter in the game of negotiations. She got exactly what she wanted and gave up nothing for it. And as we saw at the end, the ominous ending that is, she may be selling them out or at least providing their intel, their information, their coordinates to another bounty hunter or someone that may be looking for the Bad Batch or even Omega. So you just, you don't know ever if Fennec is good, bad in the middle. As she said, it truly comes down to, hey, wherever the money comes from, it doesn't matter, good or bad. So really loved getting Fennec back in the Bad Batch, further exploring this character, which we all have come to know and mostly love through her live action portrayal in the Mandoverse era. So great Fennec stuff in the this episode. As I said at the onset here, I really also enjoyed the continued focus on the Omega and Crosshair dynamic and how she's trying to help him heal. You know, she wanted to go on the mission with Hunter and Wrecker, but he, Hunter gave her another mission. You need to start helping Crosshair figure out his hand issue. And I thought it was perfectly done. Uh, I mean, you, you had to love her her slow boil take with Crosshair. She knows how to handle him better than any other clone in Clone Force 99. Uh, I mean, she just knows the right things to say and do to kind of get this crusty veteran of the Clone Wars to listen to her and, and to buy into some of her advice, some of her tips, some of her help that, that, you know, someone like Crosshair would never listen to. So I really love these two working together and, and building this bond, but I, I, I do fear it's going to kind of set us up for a major gut punch, kind of like Tex death in, in season two there. So just, just keep watching these two together. You know, there's also a nice split in this episode between the Crosshair and Omega thread and the mission. You know, the mission gave us all the, the action of the episode where Pabu gave us more exposition. So there's a nice balance between the two in bad territory. You know, we, we didn't really necessarily check in directly with the Imperials, but we did get a quasi check in with the Imperial narrative thread via the knowledge that these bounty hunters, these class one bounty hunters, are tracking M count targets for the Empire. So to me, that means they've hired bounty hunters like Cad Bane, maybe Boba Fett, maybe Fennec to go out there and track down Force Sensitives for Project Necromancer. So that, that was a cool little lore check in there. But it has been a while since we've seen Hemlock or, or even been back to Tantus in any real effort. So uh, hopefully we, we get back to that type of story in Episode 9. And finally, to close out the review here of Bad Territory, I just, I love the ending. I thought it was fantastic. It's like, you really don't know. Is, is Fennec screwing them? Is she helping them? Is whoever she's talking to eventually going to lead to help for the Bad Batch? Uh, I got some theories there. I, I, I think she was calling out to Asajj Ventress. That's right, my friends. I mean, there's kind of that garbled talk. We, we know Asajj has used voice mods before. And um, the, the fact that Fennec is reaching out to Asajj about clones interested in M counts makes sense. If you think about it, Asajj at this time could very well be working with Quinlan, Quinlan Voss on the Hidden Path, you know, saving Force sensitives from the Empire and relocating them uh, to, to kind of keep them from the Empire's ire and the Inquisitorious. So my, my guess here is the person Fennec reached out to at the very end is Asajj Ventress. I don't think it's Cad Bane because I, I, I don't think these two bounty hunters are, are that cordial or would give tips to each other like that. Uh, Boba Fett, maybe, but, but that, you know, she said, hey, they are clones. He is a clone, so he could work much better than Cad Bane. 
but I'm thinking this is our first foray into getting Asajj into the series, so that's my speculation on the ominous ending and who Fennec Shan was talking to, Asajj Ventress, to let them know, and, and, and maybe Asajj does come after the clones, and that's the scene we see in the trailer. All right, so let's get into some of the top moments moments from this episode, starting with Omega working with Crosshair, in particular the meditation scene. I just thought this was simply beautiful. I mean, you got some nice callbacks here from last season, talking about her learning meditation from Gunji, being on Kashik, which revealed to Crosshair how much he missed out on, and he could see that that pained him. But more importantly, when you know she reaches down and she can see how tense his hand in, and, and she helps him turn it over and relax and then you get that beautiful shot reminiscent of master luke sitting on octo right before his death staring out into the sunset in 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 peace in meditation so i thought this was just a it was a great scene narratively but also visually the other top moment here is kind of a silly one but it is fun i mean it was kind of awesome that we got to go to star wars louisiana down in the bayou with those space gators but the the fight especially Wrecker. I mean, come on. The guy is a WWE superstar and the most loyal friend, brother you could ever want. I mean, as soon as Hunter got snatched, dude didn't even think. He just jumps in cowabunga off the top ropes, doing a double-legged backbreaker on one of the Gators. You know, and then he's punching him, trying to stab him. Then at the end, when they get on the boat, he literally picks one up and body slams it. So... I, it was a great wrecker moment. He is the man. Like I said, he, he's full on the rock of, of Bad Batch. Just a, a great little wrestling moment with those space skaters. But it, it was a fun scene, fun action scene, um, in addition to the one we got towards the end with Siler Saris. Okay, moving into eggs and references. Uh, we got a, a, a decent one here, just based on the species that Siler Saris is. I mean, he's new. But we have seen the, the Yamri before. In fact, a character by the name of Kiddick Kiedkak. Yes, that's right. Can be seen in Chalum's Cantina in A New Hope. So we have seen this praying mantis species before. Even though Siler is technically a new character for this episode of Bad Batch. But sticking with Siler Saris, we heard Fennec call him the Slayer of Ordo Eris. Ordo Eris was the headquarters of the Haxian Brood, which were both introduced in Jedi Fallen Order. In fact, Milk Toast Cal Kestis is captured by Sork Tomo, the leader of Haxian Brood, and brought to Ordo Eris to fight in the arena to kind of help um, his buddy settle some gambling debts. So that was a nice touch there with Ordo Eris and the Haxian Brood. And I guess just for, you know, poops and giggles, you might as well mention the fact that Omega referenced meeting Gunji, learning meditation from him, and visiting Kashyyyk, and hanging out with the Wookiees. All right, my friends, that wraps our breakdown of Bad Batch S3 E8 Bad Territory. We'll be doing a deeper dive tonight on the Star Wars Time Show. You can check us out 5 p. East youtube.com slash star wars time show there's always time for star wars time and don't forget if you listen to the star wars time show the force will be with you always yeah.